You'd think that advanced fighter jets would have the capabilities to bring the pilots back to the correct aircraft carrier when conducting operations out in the open sea, or at the very least have apparatus on board to help the pilot land on the correct aircraft carrier. However, I'm sure that you'd be pleasantly surprised to find out that this does happen, and as a matter of fact, it's happened a lot more than you think it has. So, what happens if you land on the wrong aircraft carrier? Well, I suppose that entirely depends on whether you land on an allied carrier or that of an enemy. The difference is uh, quite significant, I'll tell you that. Hello! Welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and yes, it really does happen. If you landed on the wrong aircraft carrier, so for example an allied carrier in a flotilla of ships, nothing would initially happen. You would land, the crew would hook up the plane and act as normal, and act as discreetly as possible to ensure that no pilot was embarrassed by this blunder. I mean, it happens, right? Well, clearly it does because there's a protocol for it, and well, it's happened a number of times before. But I'm being a little bit coy about this because something does happen, just not officially. The official US Navy tradition is one to not say anything, but the reality is quite different. This is exactly what happened to an A7 Corsa II from USS Kitty Hawk in the 1970s, which accidentally landed on the USS Hancock. During a tour of duty, the A7 pilot from the USS Kitty Hawk started to attempt to land, when it started to triangulate its landing pattern right onto the USS Hancock. Yes, the wrong ship. It had taken off from one ship and started landing on another, without even being aware that it was about to land on the wrong aircraft carrier. Doug Connell, a former captain, air wing commander and fleet chief of staff at the United States Navy, recalled the time when the USS Hancock went unanswered for its calls due to the fact that the pilots were still tuned into the frequency of the Kitty Hawk, meaning that the actual pilot didn't hear any of the pleas from the actual crew. So yeah, if you're about to come in for land and you hear absolutely nothing, you must just presume that you're good to go. I mean, why not? I mean, the ship's there, it's a clear runway, you're about to land, all is good. I mean, it's not like you're about to land on a completely different aircraft carrier just because of a simple mistake now. I mean, surely that doesn't happen, right? The airboss on the Hancock assumed that the A7 was battle damaged and was unable to communicate on Hancock's radio frequency, resulting in the plane landing without issue, landing safely and without incident. The pilot had no idea what he just let himself in for however, as once the pilot landed, the crew decided to leave him a personal paint job on the side of his plane. And it's not just a little bit, I mean look at this thing. And like I said, this isn't just a singular time that this happened. This actually forms somewhat of a tradition where the crew would basically put these paintings and crew messages on these planes as somewhat of a humiliation to the pilots for cocking up and going on the wrong aircraft carrier. A little bit of fun, but there it is. As a matter of fact, many different aircraft would get messages and graffiti marked all over their plane just to make sure that the pilot was well branded with the burdens of their mistake when they departed to go back to their actual aircraft carrier. The crew, once they had their fun mind you, refueled the jet and let the pilot go back on his way. So I imagine that the people at the USS Kitty Hawk had a few things to say when they realised that their plane hadn't come back. I love the idea of being a crew member on your ship, letting a pilot go and then they don't come back and you think, oh god what the hell's happened to them, only for them to return sometime later being absolutely caked in graffiti. I imagine that raises a few questions as to what the hell happened. The markings included messages of ridicule, quotes and even handprints from the crew straight onto the side of the plane. This isn't an isolated incident however, with a few occasions of pilots getting this unfortunate rebranding, including a Royal Navy Air Squadron for landing on a US Naval Air Station. And like I said, it's just a little bit of fun, but at the same time, it's a good reminder for pilots to make sure they check where they're landing and not make sure you land in the wrong place, because whilst the worst thing that many of these pilots had was a bit of ridicule for a while, things could have gone a lot worse. Thankfully, nine times out of 10, that never happened. Just to back this whole thing up, the official US Naval Institute even recently sent a tweet out in 2018 which said that Navy traditions hold that pilots who made a navigational error and land on the wrong carrier got mocked by the crew who decorate the plane with graffiti, 
Adding US Air Force markings is the ultimate insult to an already embarrassed naval aviator. This even has its own term commonly used and is part of a larger military aviation tradition called zapping, where aviators do their best to make their mark on any units they happen to visit. Basically, a war version of tagging something with slogans, badges or stickers. Whatever you can do to get the message across. It's all tradition at the end of the day. This is pretty cool, and I kind of wish they did this a little bit more in recent times, but as you can imagine, with the tightening of the rules and things becoming more professional, these things don't tend to happen quite as often, and the tradition has kind of worn off over time. This could be due to the fact that the tradition just isn't as popular anymore, but perhaps the more realistic idea is that these mistakes are less common these days, due to the fact that these planes have very advanced navigational equipment on board, meaning that if you were to land on the wrong aircraft carrier, particularly during the modern days, you would have made an absolutely monumental cock-up, meaning that that happens very, very rarely. So, like I said at the start of the video, that is everything that happens if you landed on an allied carrier. If you landed on an enemy carrier, well, I couldn't really find many examples of this because I imagine that if you even attempted to triangulate a landing on an enemy carrier, you would be immediately shot out of the sky. So, I don't think that would really go wise for anybody to give it a try. But, there's a first time for everything. If you guys liked that video, here's another one just like it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.